What's up, everybody? Sunday, Thomas Take Sunday, here, finally, UFC 214, the aftermath. Uh, wow. Um, where do I start? Uh, this edition of the Thomas Take is brought to you by the host, Ryan Thomas, of the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. That is the voice you are listening to right now on Spreaker.com. And if you can't tell, my voice is a little bit sore due to the fact that I was at the establishment known as B-Dubs last night watching the UFC fights take place um, at UFC 214 in Anaheim, California, in the Honda Center, the home of the Anaheim Ducks. And what an event that was. I, I want to start off by saying what an event that was. It was probably the first time in quite some time as an MMA fan, that I can honestly say the spectacle was completely taken out of it. It was all about the fights. It was all about MMA. Every fight mattered. Every fight had implications from the undercard to the main event. Easily one of the best cards that the UFC has put on, I would say, in, in a few years, to be quite honest. Um, yeah, people say UFC 205 is the best card ever assembled. Um, I'm talking pre-fight and post-fight. You know, the fights really didn't disappoint. Um, Lawler and Cerrone was a, was a battle. Uh, Cyborg showed up. Woodley and Maya was a technical fight. And then, obviously, the main event. John Jones, the now two-time UFC light heavyweight champion. And I want to start off by recapping the, ap- the action... Recapping the action with Cormier versus Jones 2. The narrative was Jones was a longtime champion. DC got Jones' belt only due to the fact that Jones uh, did things outside of the octagon to lose his title. So this fight was a long time coming. This fight was supposed to happen at UFC 200. It didn't happen. Uh, And it finally, here it is, UFC 214, a year later, and we got the fight. And I want to start off by saying that these are two of the best UFC light heavyweights probably of all time in John Jones and Daniel Cormier. And outside of the now two losses that Daniel Cormier has suffered to the hand by the hand of John Jones or by the foot of John Jones I should say um hands and feet of John Jones um Cormier is 19 and 0 outside of John Jones which is which is remarkable in both heavyweight and light heavyweight so let's start off with the fight obviously this fight was entertaining Cormier I thought did really really well at clinching and, and landing punches, landing punches in short distance. Much like I said in the pre-fight show, that if DC fought in a similar style, in a similar fashion to the way that he did versus Alexander Gustafson, where he was really he was really able to land punches close, in close, in close range, whether he had a, a clinch or or just in close range, and DC needed to land punches in close range due to the reach advantage, the heavy reach advantage that Jones had in in the uh, in the fight going into this fight and in the first fight. So that was something that I think DC definitely worked on over his performances with Rumble, over his performances with Anderson Silva and Alexander Gustafson. Those were performances that he really learned a lot from and. That was evident to me from the from the start of the fight. I thought, man, DC is is doing pretty well. It could have been easily argued that DC was winning one of the rounds, maybe both rounds. Um, you know that that's another argument for another day. The end result was the end result, but really, the fight itself was highly entertaining. It was a battle. Both fighters w- were giving it as well as they were taking it, and I I, I really that narrative going into the fight was said but for them to deliver on it and then for the for the fight to end in the emphatic fashion that it did it was truly remarkable and uh, I want to tip my cap off to both John Jones and Daniel Cormier for their performances on Saturday night 
Um, but John Jones seemed to be just weathering the storm, throwing leg kicks after leg kicks, mixing in body kicks and jabs really well. And over the course of the fight, I, I, I've watched it since I watched it the first time last night. I watched it again today. I thought to myself, as Jones was throwing the oblique kicks and the, and the shin kicks and the front knee kicks and the, and the actual uh, leg kicks, made Daniel Cormier assume that that was what he was going to throw. And in actuality, uh, it was most of the time. But the finishing blow, the blow that really sent DC rocking, was that left head kick. And that was, a, that was a move that was anticipated to be a leg kick or body kick by Daniel Cormier. And then Jones just came over the top with that head kick. And finished it off after throwing a, a beautiful knee to Daniel Cormier as Daniel Cormier was kind of uh, falling down um, and then ground and pound from there on and that was all she wrote. But realistically, there's a lot of controversy with this fight afterwards and that is something that I wanted to talk about first and foremost as well uh, in the first edition of today's show. Joe Rogan interviewed both John Jones and Daniel Cormier. And dating back to, I believe, UFC 208, uh, or no, not UFC 2, UFC 203, which was an October event pitting Stipe Miocic versus Alistair Overeem. Overeem was, was beaten down in the fight, was knocked out, TKO'd, and Joe Rogan interviewed Alistair Overeem. Overeem was not of the right mind to be talking to Joe Rogan, and it was evident due to the fact that Overeem said he felt a tap from Stipe Miocic when prior to Overeem being finished in the fight, Overeem had a deep guillotine on Stipe. And he said, I felt the tap, and they played the replay of the fight, and it showed no tap from Stipe. So it made the UFC kind of look bad that they're interviewing a fighter that is just, you know, literally minutes coming off of having his brain rattled, um from his head being bounced off the canvas, and that was, it was an embarrassment. So that was this, the, the next step for Joe Rogan to say, hey, we're not going to interview fighters after they were knocked out. And here he is, UFC uh, 214, Daniel Cormier just received some of the worst news in his career, probably the worst news in his career, that he had just lost to John Jones via knockout, and Daniel Cormier was was crying due to the fact that he didn't even realize he had been knocked out. He didn't believe that he had been knocked out until Dana White told him to watch the replay. And the replay was playing while Joe Rogan felt the need to interview him. I don't question whether or not Joe Rogan should have felt the need to interview him because that was a big fight. And a lot was said and done between both fighters in the fight. In the, in the build-up to both fights, and it was the end of a rivalry. Regardless of what DC says as far as him winning the, not winning the fights, it's not much of a rivalry. It was a rivalry in the eyes of the fans. Going into this fight, it was obviously a rivalry. Going into the first fight, it was obviously a rivalry. It was a rivalry. So, you know, DC didn't win either fight. Competitively, it wasn't a rivalry, but... By the standards of the situation, it was. Jones losing his belt due to his actions outside the cage. Cormier getting the belt in a, in a victory over Anthony Johnson. Defending it versus Gustafson. Defending it versus Johnson. It is what it is. And do I think Joe Rogan should have interviewed him? Yes, I do. Do I think that... Do I understand why Joe Rogan interviewed him? Yes, I do. Do I think he should have interviewed him? No. But I do understand why he did. I wanted to correct myself in that statement. Also, Daniel Cormier could have conducted himself a little bit better inside the cage post uh, UFC 214 post fight. Um, get some dust on the mic there. Um, post fight he could have could have conducted himself a little bit better and realistically did he not know he was knocked out was he mad that he was knocked out who knows who knows but 
watching that on the Jumbotron, it's not that he was upset that he lost. It's that and much, much more. He was upset that he lost. He was upset that he lost via knockout. He was upset that in the eyes of the fans, he was never really the true champion. He was upset because his career is virtually over. This is the end for Daniel Cormier. There's no, there's nothing left to do for Daniel Cormier beyond John Jones. This was this was it. There's no reason. There's no other fights. There's no other fights for Daniel Cormier. This was the end for DC. And it was the chapter to a new beginning for John Jones. John Jones outside the cage fought once the last two years man you would have never known it i mean dc did land some nice punches but jones was hanging in there he looked athletic it was probably the best i had ever seen jones and if you really want to be nitpicky it was his first finish in quite some time ovin st Pru went the distance cormier went the distance it was his first finish in probably three years i want to say so this is a new era Although we have the same man leading the way, this is a new era for John Jones, chapter two of his career. And the tough part for DC, in the case of DC, is that he wanted to be a part of history on, on, on the end that, that he saw fit. He wanted to even the score. But when history reflects on it, it will always be, well, Jones got in trouble and DC won the belt. And to a degree, I do feel sorry for him for that. But in my eyes, as I said, he preaches the narrative too much of John Jones being a bad person rather than saying what he was going to do to win the fight. And realistically, I thought he fought very well leading up to that head kick knockout. So who does John Jones fight next? As I started the part one of today's show the thomas takes sunday ufc aftermath ufc 214 aftermath cormier versus jones too start off with the main event i said this card was great it made me feel like it was a real mma card it was more sport less spectacle but of course it ends in spectacle with john jones calling out the wwe universal champion Brock Lesnar. And this fight will happen. This fight will happen. Let me repeat myself. This fight will happen. It's the day and age that we live in. If Mayweather McGregor can happen, this fight will happen. If Donald Trump can be the President of the United States, this fight will happen. If OJ Simpson can get off on parole, this fight will happen seen a lot of crazy stuff in 2016 2017 and we will see john jones fight brock lesnar in a ufc cage no doubt in my mind why is this fight the right fight this fight is the right fight for john jones because john jones as i stated and as everyone knows he was out of the game for two years he needs a payday it's the right fight for John Jones because John Jones is mauled fighting at heavyweight since the beginning of his career. This is the right fight for John Jones because virtually he doesn't see there are any challengers for him in the UFC light heavyweight division. I disagree with that. I believe that this is another way for John Jones to duck Alexander Gustafson. He does not want to fight that man, and I can't really say I blame him. I wouldn't want to fight the guy either. But. This fight can't happen for at least a year. Brock is frozen in the USADA testing pool for the next six months. And then, you know, training and, and who, who knows. Within the next year, this fight will happen, though. Jones might fight Ozdemir, who had a very impressive performance against Manawa. That could be the next contender. He's won three fights in five months. But to wrap things up, John Jones... The new, and again, UFC light heavyweight champion. I do believe this is the end for Daniel Cormier. We'll be right back. This is the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Special edition, UFC 214, the aftermath on Thomas Take Sunday. 